amongst the crew that we have down here for WSA, Darren Haynes, our sports director. Come on over here, Darren. Tell me, so you were close to all of this. Um, tell me what you saw, what you, you know, down at the intersection of 15th and H. Well, what attracted a lot of people to this area were those, what they call those, like, light bombs, lightning bombs, were making those big explosions. And what happened was the police officers, DC police officers set up the, basically a, a front to basically stop us from walking down the street. And what we've been trying to get the police officers and Secret Service to do all day, even at the White House, was to take a knee to support what this protest is all about. And then next thing you know, about one cop takes a knee, then two cops take a knee. And then I believe it was a total of five police officers that took a knee. And I was, I was blown away. I, I, at first I was like, oh my gosh, are they gonna get in trouble because of their job? Um, but I then went over to the police officer and I was just like, why, why did you do that? Because of the position that you're in. And I'm saying, quote, because I respect what y'all are doing. And to hear that from a police officer in this situation, um, that means a lot. This is what the people really want to hear because they want answers. And to hear someone say, hey, I support you, that goes a long way. And it was actually, it's funny because right down where this big gathering was, we saw this discussion happening between police and a group of protesters talking about you know the need they were talking about we need more black police officers the police officers were saying this to the group mm -hmm. of protesters it was a peaceful discussion and you were hearing about you know the need for security cameras or body cameras on the police officers mm -hmm. so it's interesting to see those discussions and the one you heard as well i mean this it's it's like we've you i mean as you were saying you came out here friday and saturday describe to me how different today is compared to the other two so, days so to, today was a time where i actually wanted to be in the front lines to really feel and breathe and be a part of what's going on. And anybody who has watched me on WSA 9 knows that because of the police brutality I was a victim of in 2014 is a reason why I support Black Lives Matter. It's, it's why I'm, I'm here. It's why I have a sign um, because I was a victim. I, I, I lived it myself. And so to be in the front lines and to hear people chanting their frustration i'm like wow that's why i'm frustrated I, I it humanized me i mean i'm a human but it it put me on the same level as everybody else and we were able to express our feelings in a very peaceful way the worst thing that happened today were some water bottles that were thrown that was the worst thing that i saw, I saw today i call that peace you no know, absolutely you know the take-home message of all this and you know this, these protests that are happening uh, you just said it right there, maybe. The, the big takeaway from these protests, what is the main message well, the of ma all this? The main message is people need to vote when it, it comes down to the, the elections. It, we, can, we can protest in the streets, and I love it because it creates awareness. Like, the White House is right there. If Trump is, the president's in the White House, he knows that there are people there. And so, so they, they, they create the awareness. Now the only way we can really make those decisions change is if we vote and we hopefully they elect who the majority of the people um, elect to be the president. Also, when it comes down to the census report, a lot, there are a lot of things that we can do that can help make a change in our community. This is one of them, but this is the first step to a bigger step, and that's getting to the polls. Lorenzo, I think he's uh, waiting for him. Yes. This is best friend Lorenzo. The, the incident with police up here, I'm sorry, the incident with police that happened up earlier. Let me, I can, the, the incident from police from years ago. Yeah, and yeah. I believe the question, Lorenzo, was how did that change him, correct? So, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a, Lorenzo, that's a great question. It, one, it, every single time I get pulled over, I record every single, I record audio now. I used to record video. Um, that's every single time I get pulled over now. And I actually have another video where the cop told me uh, when I didn't feel safe, he was like, don't make me have to yank you out of the car. That was Connecticut State Police. Um, they did their own investigation on that one. I don't know the results of it. That's something I need to follow up on. But it's, it still lives, it's, it's fear. It, it, and I mentioned this earlier, like this entire week, usually I'm the person who tweets and do this and do that. But it was just so real this week where I, I was scared. I was scared because it keeps happening. It keeps happening. I mean, look at the sign. We have the sign here. So, 
So this is this is the sign that you leave blank because you, you un, unfortunately you feel like something's going to happen next year. It's, it's, it's going to be another person. It's going to be another individual, and the history has not proven this poster wrong. And that's and that's the reality. And that's why I was so fearful this entire week because. Man. There's been, it, it, it changes your life when you feel like you're helpless and you can't do anything and you have police officers yanking you on the car and then putting you on the ground and you don't know what's next and they lock, they lock you up, they beat you up and then you have to go live your life like nothing happened. And at that time, I was just hired at ESPN at that time. And I was scared to tell people that I got my butt kicked by the police. I was afraid of that. Like, why should I be afraid to speak about that? And throughout the years, as when Colin Kaepernick started taking a knee to protest social injustice, it, it added more fuel to my fire to say, basically almost like the Me Too movement. Me Too. That, that happened to me. And so that's why I never, that's how I changed from that moment where I'm a media member, but yet I'm also a human being in the streets of DC fighting for what I feel is right. And that's what we have right now. That's what's unfolding right now man, you in DC. Up, man. I, uh, but you know, it's, we hear stories like this and you are, you know, a part of this, pro, you know, you were witnessing all of this. It's stories like that that are motivating people to go out to the White House right now. It's stories like that that are motivating people to uh, go out to the intersection of 15 and H. This is what is happening in D.C. right now, and this is the protest that is happening right now, and this is the type of thing, these stories that we just heard, the very personal stories that are very real for people uh, that are motivating them to come out to this protest.